you first got the uh, message to pray last night in the spirit and pray in the morning. Praise the Lord. Let's open up in prayer for the praise and worship of God. Heavenly Father, oh, it's such a pleasure for us to come to praise you and to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, I know the world and the body of Christ are celebrating this day in their own fashion. But we, Father, been led by the Spirit and been filled with the Spirit, come to honor you, to let you know how much we love you. And we come with our open heart to praise you and to worship you because of the great love of your resurrection of love father that is encountering the whole universe we give you praise we give you glory father in the mighty name of jesus as you man our heart together we are united together that we will praise you and worship you with one voice one heart Father, knowing that you are well pleased of people coming to praise and worship you. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say Amen.
quicken every soul in this church this day. Let it be made quicken and made alive to a higher level of what you have restored the church to be. Lord, to your spirit, quicken us so that we come. But I want you folks to write the scriptures down and to meditate on that because this is something that God has given this church the revelation of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to concern His plan and His purpose why all this was done. And uh, I don't think I heard it in anywhere in all my ministry of life going to church because I know this is a revelation from God to this church. Amen? And God has revelation for other churches in other areas. Okay. The verse 10 says that I may know him and the power of his res resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So, to begin with, of why the plan and purpose of God 
that he came, that we got to understand and really know the reason why Jesus came and, and what the power of his resurrection means and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. He had pleasure in doing that. Because why? Because he knew what the outcome was going to be. He knew that it, it is for humanity in these final stages. And that if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, that I may get, that I may receive unto all the whole reason of why he did that, that he's raising all the rest of the people, even myself. Amen? So, because God saw from the very beginning this resurrection has a point where it starts from the beginning, okay? Because of Adam's fall. God's love for mankind was already set in the spiritual realm before it was manifested in the natural realm. What I mean by that is that now the resurrection of love from God's true revelation of His plan and purpose to receive humanity. Okay. Turn to John. We know this scripture to be so uh, uh, applicable to the world for the salvation. <clears throat> John 3. But I'm going to start instead of just for the 16th verse. I'm going to start from the 14th. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So he's saying here that the Son of Man, the purpose of creation was what the Son of Man going to be so lifted up. Okay, that he's going to be exalted beyond any measure. That whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What has this got to do with Resurrection Sunday? It has everything to do with Resurrection Sunday. It has everything to do with God's plan and purpose of creation. You see? So God so loved the world. You know that the scripture does say that God is love. Amen? 1 John 4, 8 and 16 talks about God is love. Okay? Why? For God so loved the world, for God so loved humanity, for God so loved that His family would be formed eternally. Okay? The most powerful character of God, for God so loved the world. Now, you know, we serve a God that beyond any measure, nothing can compare to Him. Now, when I speak about God, I'm speaking about the Godhead bodily. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Those three have always been in together from before even creation, before even angels were created, before anything else was created. But as we understand the scriptures, as we learn the word and we get the revelation from God, 
that everything was created for man. Praise the Lord, the whole creation was created for man. Because we know that we serve a, a great God. But he's talking about God so long, not because for God is so mighty that he is the Alpha, the Omega, that he is the beginning and the end, that he is the God of truth, he is the God of light, he is the God of life. No, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's the most powerful character. And this, as, as I go through this message, they're going to tell you why. That he had his plan and purpose before anything was even created. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I tell you, it's very exciting, you know. Now, we know that he is the God of faith, huh? Because we know that he started off right here too. That whosoever believed in him, right? And 15 verses, but that whosoever believed in him again, not perish but have everlasting life. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever. So this is the salvation that God knew that God whole being, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, was to, His plan was to bring forth an eternal family forevermore. And He knew before anything else that before anybody seen, before, a, before the Adam fell, God already had made a savior. They were all in agreement. They seen everything in the spiritual realm before it even manifested in the natural. Okay. Now, to understand the revelation, we need to start from the beginning, Genesis. Let's go to Genesis, the first chapter. Let's look at Genesis 1. What has this got to do with today? Wow, this has everything to do with his love for his family. And he knew that his son was the final sacrifice. Let's look at verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, all this was done before anything else was created in the natural world for man. Okay? But Harry said, Let us, O Elohim, O the Godhead body, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Says, let us make man in our image before anything, before even a small grass or the seed or anything, or the dry land or the water or anything that was created. Let us make man in our image. And it says, in our likeness. That means that God is not holding anything back for his family. That he wants them not only to look like him as a spirit man, but also to get the capacity to think like him, to speak like him, to, to do things like him. Before any creation, you see? And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeping upon the earth. So here in the spiritual realm, before any creation, God said that we're going to give man a, a humanity power. Because God is all-powerful. He's omnipotent. He's all omnipresence. You see, we serve a mighty God. Amen? Amen. So 27 verse, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. 
male and female created he them. So there's no issue between men and women, really. You know, but they have to become one, and they will become one. You know. Now let's look at the 28th verse. And here is in the spiritual realm, before anything was done. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That means that anything that has life, man has authority. You see, the first Adam understood that. He had, he had such a mind of God that he could name all the creatures, animals, and everything, you see. And God has intended that for you and I, for humanity. Praise the Lord. But God knew that the first Adam would fail. That's why. <coughs> Early, Jesus was the plan. God had bodily at work. Father, the Word and the Spirit. As you see, Genesis says, you know, uh, Genesis 1, 1, 2, 3. God said, God said, you know, God said. And then, boom, well, God said. You know what happened? Was that uh, God, when He spoke, his, the Son was in operation and the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the deep, you see. And when he spoke, okay, the Spirit was out there moving upon the face of the deep. And when he spoke, the word that he spoke came out from his bosom, which was Jesus, you see. He was the word. So when the Father spoke, then the word and the Spirit in the spiritual realm created them to start the creation in the natural realm. Praise the Lord. Mankind was the purpose for the family. To understand the revelation, we need to start from this, right? Remember Genesis? 26 talks about the Godhead in the spirit. 28 talks about the, uh, the God is speaking about the family in, in the spirit because he says to reply, replenish the earth, huh? No, multiply, huh? His whole reason was for, for that. Praise the Lord. Let us look at John 3.16 this time again. It, it's just uh, not for the 14, but 316. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So already God knew that the world was going to be in a turmoil. And as we understand the scriptures, it all began in, in Genesis, right? Did it begin in Genesis? Huh? Where it, 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 it talks about, you know, um, God gave a commandment. Hmm? Did God give a commandment? He says in, in, in Genesis, the second chapter, God's, the Lord God commanded the man 16 verse say of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou is it is thereof thou shalt surely die that's the commandment he gave you see God gave a commandment you know And what happened? God broke the commandment. I mean, not God, but God the Son. Oh, I mean, God the man. Huh? Adam broke the commandment. 
in the third in the third chapter of Genesis and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant in sixth verse pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat now you know that this commandment that God gave okay he gave it to Adam it was not created yet, okay? So we know that man was supposed to be the head of the household, okay? God's resurrection of love for family, it has to be, you gotta believe, or you gotta have faith, which we just see three, right? John 3, 16, 17. Now, the process begins immediately when somebody believes, because it's faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, right? Romans 11, 6 talks about that, right? That it's but without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For He to come to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them, that Diligently seek him. See, he's not a reward of them that take him just for granted. That you know, but diligently seek him. Okay. The process begins immediately because of the word, the spirit, and faith. That's why the the just shall live by faith. We are just about by faith you know from that moment on there is a change in the humanity structure in the atmosphere that God is bringing back because of what the second Adam did that he was fail proof he could never fail he was you know uh, uh, eternally forever you know a victory for God. Okay. Now turn to Romans, the fifth chapter. Romans 5. You're going to see how the faith has to work. Okay. Romans 5, let's look at the first verse. It says here, Therefore be justified by faith. When we got born again, we got justified by faith, didn't we? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I can remember when I got born again. Uh, you know, uh, there was such a, a relief in my heart. I was so happy, you know, that, man, I was going through some tremendous things, you know, with me and my family. Let's go to the second verse. But whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice. So it's saying here that now we have access by faith into this grace, then we can work our faith and the faith could be the, the plan and the purpose for mankind to get more into the likeness back that he had lost. Okay? Mankind had lost because of the first Adam. Now we have to get like God. We have to speak, think, act and, and, and do things like God. But, but we only can do it through faith and faith working and, and we know that a faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God and that the faith and the spirit works together just like God said in creation, Genesis God spoke and the word came forth from his bosom and the Holy Spirit God did all the quickening you see it's the same principle all along it never has been changed. Everything points to you. 
as a member of the family. You have to realize the resurrection of love that God has because of you. You see? Now we say, not only so, but we glory in tribulation also knowing that tribulation worketh patient and patient experience and experience hope. And hope make it not a shame because the love of God, here's the love of God again, God is love, the power of God, is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So when we got born again, God gave us His best. He gave us the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is so mighty because it is God's love. He started us off with nothing but the best. He didn't limit us, you see. We have to recognize that. How much God loved you. Man, you know, he, he gave you the best, but now in order to access that by faith, He know that we have to do the work, faith working. Faith go work by what? Tribulation will come. Huh? If we, and we know that we need to have patience, right? It, it says all here, experience. And, and uh, if without the experience, without working your faith, there's no growth. There's, nothing can be added to your likeness with God unless you start to experience and see for your own self how good God is. And hope make it not a shame. Now, let's go to 6 verse. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. And scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. Isn't that so? How many men would die for one man? Hmm? How many men would die for a good man. And, and, and when, you, when you say good, you don't know how good the man really is. Maybe he seems good to you. But if he's not God, he's not born again, or if he's born again, he might portray good. But inside his heart might not be good. You see? Praise the Lord. So, so we need to have the experience. We need to work our faith doing the good works. And that's where God says that this end time church is where the good work will be multiplied unto you. Not only for your growth and maturity as you never did see before. The changes in your heart. The word will come out with power and authority as you never seen in your life. But verse, but God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So Jesus, from the very beginning, before any creation, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit said, you know, after the first Adam, since Christ came upon this earth, it's hard for us to, uh, um, you know, get was sacrificed with such great sin upon the people. And the sin came, became so bad that in Genesis, in, I don't know what chapter it is, the fifth or the sixth chapter, it was so bad that God had to bring forth the flood to start the family again. It was so wicked. Because God is like in him is no darkness at all. Not even one speck of darkness. And that's how he, he determined that his family is going to be. And yet we can live that kind of life in his lifetime now to a degree so high that man, you can be walking in such a great anointing of God's power that people can fall when you walk by. I'm not exaggerating this thing. It's going to happen to the church in this end time. Yes, For those who believe and those who grab hold of what God wants the church to be because of what Jesus has done. He died, he suffered on the cross, and he went down to hell. 
But remember now, he had to take care of two things. He had to take care of our mortal body first. Because we are so concentrated on our feelings, our emotions and everything, you see. Man, they didn't know there was a spirit man first. They thought there was, what they see was them. So Christ has to die for death on the cross. All the beating and the suffering and the whipping and everything. Took him six hours to suffer on the cross. You see? But now, even though when, before he went on the cross, do you know that before any sickness and disease would come upon him, he had to die spiritually. Because nothing can come upon him if he was so spiritually alive and connected with God. You see? Because he was sinless. His blood was holy. One drop of the blood could change the world. It was so pure. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you an absolute truth. You better grab hold of the truth of how much God loved you. So that process, as you can see, the operation of God's plan and purpose of His love by the God in bodily to give man His most powerful character to overcome the world. Love. What great love. Amen. God did not limit us with His best. We decide how much. God gave us His best. He didn't put a limit. The limit was you decide how much you want. God decides you what? He wants you to have all. Yes. He don't want anything left in you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let's look, look at Romans 6. 6. Let's look at 3. Know you not? There's so many of us as we're baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death that like as Christ was raised for up from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life. So here he's talking about the new creation. You have a beginning again. You have a brand new start to start to impart into your mind, renewing your mind with the word of God so that more likeness of God will be operating in every area of your life. Hallelujah. So he says, don't you know that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death? That means that if he died, he can see no more. Hmm? If you died with him, you can see him no more. Is that so? That's what the Bible says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, all things are passed away. All things. You you were baptized into the body of Christ. They're not talking about you being saved by water. He's talking about you being baptized into the body of Christ when you made Jesus your own Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. The baptizing in the water is to show us and let the world know that we, we struggle, but we need to get baptized in water to refresh us again. The water baptism to refresh us again. That we got to get our, our things right because we are failing in our effort, you see? But that's all right because God love that you are going on the right path. You are being honest with yourself. You are telling that, saying that you are uh, uh, on your own value. You are failing. So that's why you get water better. But this baptism is talking about the body of Christ. When you say, Jesus, come into your life. I'm making my Lord and say, what happened? If it is true, you got baptized, you know what? 
You got circumcised. Amen? Amen. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death. It's just as when Christ was raised from the dead, we should walk in the newness of life. He's going to talk about the newness of life again, right? In 2 Corinthians 5.17. Behold, huh? it does say that. This is the exact scripture of 2 Corinthians 5 17. Huh? Amen. That all things are passed away. Behold, behold, all things have become new. That means that you're going to have the newness of life. You see this? You can see the scriptures? Huh? Praise the Lord. So when we read this thing, God will reveal revelation after revelation throughout the whole Bible. For if we be planted together in the likeness of His death, so shall we be also in the likeness of His resurrection. Now, it's going to say that the God, His body, purpose is for you. To get into the word, get your mind renewed, to see where you are at and what he has given you and I. He wrote, he made us rise up together with him. Praise the Lord. You can see that, can you? Now, that means. Again, I'm going to say, God don't want to limit you. But you, he gave you the responsibility of how much you want. And how much you want and how much you desire. And how much fire you are. And if you listen to the word, if you grab hold of his scripture, and it becomes rhema into you, it becomes spirit and life into you, then you get on fire with God. And then you want to do those things. They're going to increase the likeness of God's character in His people. Hallelujah. Turn to Romans 8. God is so good. Let's, let's, I didn't have this, uh, gave you in this dawn, but let's look at the 11th verse. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Jesus from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. So, when you get to get to know more of the likeness of God, you're going to understand that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost giving you the provision in His Word to so quicken every area of your body to make you in perfect health. That's what it is. You say. Hallelujah. Let's go to 14 verse. For as many as they are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So the scripture also says that we cannot just be living in the Spirit. We have to be walking in the Spirit. Didn't we go to the experience faith working? Huh? We got to be walking in the Spirit. We got to experience the Spirit. You know, of our new fullness of the newness of life of all things become new because all things become new and I'm going to get his provision in my soul I'm going to hunger for it, I'm going to desire it I'm going to get on fire for it and I become more the likeness of the Father just like you 16 verse, the spirit itself Romans 8 16 Bear witness with our spirit, we are the children of God. Don't you know that you're born again? Hmm? You know in your heart. The spirit itself, bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And what are 17 verses? And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, then we may be also glorified together. Now the word, the the part that we suffer with him is because we got to work our faith on this world that is cursed, you see. But then, as we do that, and we get more of his likeness in us, then we'll be glorifying together. Amen. 
You guys got more of what God is telling the church. Praise the Lord. Not taking the highest value of Jesus' sacrifice life here because he was the only fair proof for God as a man in the flesh for mankind. Okay? Because this resurrection was God's plan by Jesus. Be the sacrifice. Okay? And God's purpose was for you to become more like his likeness because you are in the family of God. Yes. I'm going to keep on repeating that until you become revelation. He was the only filled proof. There is nothing under the sun that could do what he did. There is no name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That means that there is no one in every generation of creation of mankind that can accomplish the eternal salvation for his family. Amen. Why did God do that? Because one thing you have to remember, it all turns back to God's love. Why? Because God loved you that he didn't make you and I robots. That's why. He had to get a sacrifice. That's why before everything was created, he seen the first Adam fall. He seen the angels. He made them all perfect. They were beautiful. They were all perfect. Lucifer was perfect. He was the leader of praise and worship to God. You see? But he saw them. He saw everything fail. Amen. How I know that? You read the end of this book. God can see the future. And everything comes to pass. Nothing fails. He seen it all. And it's been manifested now. We're going in a glorious time of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can you imagine joint heirs with Christ? Heirs of God? What does that mean? Totally. He didn't put limit. That's what they mean. You see? He didn't put limit. Now take it, okay now. Let's look at Colossians 2. Colossians 2. Where am I? Colossians 2. I'm going to start with the 11th verse. Okay. In whom also you are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. In putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. That, remember I, I said that when as soon as you got born again, there was a circumcision in your heart. You see? And that heart took away the Adamic nature, the first Adam failure. Okay? And that's why God made all things new. Now you have a free opportunity to choose His ways to become so powerful on this earth and so love of him buried with him in baptism where also you are risen with him to the faith see there was the faith of operation of God 
You see, I told you that you cannot please God without faith, or just shall live by faith. That we have to remember how important the Word is and the Spirit is. You got to be talking to the Holy Ghost, the greater one that is in you. You got to have communion with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which I do every day. See? Praise the Lord. That's God's plan, the operation of God's plan. And you'll be dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, having quickened together with Him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Remember, we read the earlier verse that you were quickened, Roman? Hmm? It's a spirit of Christ leaving you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, so quicken your mortal body. Huh? It's the same thing. We're going over those same things, okay? That God is trying to put it into witnesses that we get a hold of His revelation of His love. Blotted out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way. He called it, we call it delegated power. Because Jesus is now seated on the right hand with the Father on God's throne. And we as the body of Christ is still on the earth with His Spirit in our body, the temple of God on the earth. So we with the Holy Spirit are the temple of God on the earth for the natural part of doing your good work in the natural realm, but also too, as we can see, God has never limited the humanity of those that got born again and got all things new, a newness of life, that he had raised Christ from the dead and he made us sit together with him also. Okay, so in the spiritual realm, we have all power and all authority. And when it becomes a revelation, when it becomes spirit and life in your heart, then you know how to take the power and authority and shove it down his throat and bruise his head. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 1. I'm going to explain to you what's happening now on this. Ephesians 1, 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. We know that we cannot get anywhere in this life place without the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. And that is the greater one that lives in us. That's where it is. So he's the Holy Ghost that teaches us all things, bring all things to our remembrance. God has into all truth and show us things which is to come. See? That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. You know what his inheritance is, huh? His inheritance in the saints is for do the good work on this earth now and to be his everlasting family in the future. Be just like father like son, father like children, you see? Amen? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who do believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. That means that we have to believe through faith to the word of God that, that God had to use his exceeding greatness of his power. Although he's almighty, he's omniscient, omnipresent, he's the Alpha and the Omega, he has to use everything to raise Christ from the dead. His devil is exceeding great power. You have to grab hold of that. You see, God gets so much power that the God says that the weakest of God's power is the strongest that man can ever be. It's literally saying that man has no power over God. 
That's what they say. You say, praise the Lord. Far above. Now that's not above. It says far. This tremendous height of difference of power that we have. Above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. You see? Coronavirus, is that a name? Whose name is above that? Jesus. And how far is he? Far above that. And what is that for the church? You are given the delegated power. Symptoms might hit you, but you take your stand. You don't tolerate that. You don't even frickle with that. You don't even, you know, get rid of it immediately. The symptoms. Hallelujah. And then put all things under his feet. Far, far above all principalities and powers. Far, far above all of those things. And gave him to be the head of all things. To who? To the church. Who is the church? Which is his body. The fullness of him that fill it all in all. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Go to uh, second Ephesians 4. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Do you understand God's love? Hmm? He loved you beyond what your wildest imagination. Even when, you know, we think that, oh, we love our grandchildren. I love my grandchildren so much, my great-grandchildren, huh? my children, my wife. I love it. But God is preeminence in my life. That when I love him first place, he'll take care of my love growth for the rest of them to always speak good and blessings over them. That's God's likeness, you see. Hallelujah. You better grab hold of what this is because this is for the church. Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So what happened? In the spiritual realm, you're there, far above. And if you the little toe, everything is far below your little toe. That's a revelation of the power of our God. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us, to Christ Jesus. Here, what is he talking about? He's talking about his likeness again. You know, the fruit of the Spirit. Remember, God's image and likeness are the glorious provisions given to the body of Christ, perfected to his word, spirit, and faith. For which cause you know, 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For which cause we faint not, though our other body perish, and our inner man is renewed day by day. we got to get our, re our inner man renewed day by day. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, talks about be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the likeness of who you are in Christ Jesus. You see? Hallelujah. And it's only to revelation that he's building his church. Matthew 16 talks about that, right? And 2 Corinthians 3, 18, which we use when we go out to the other churches, 
but we all with open face behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. That means that your likeness, as you improve it, going to change your image. Because you as a human being, your image can be changed, right? They know when you're sad, they know when you're mad, they know when you're upset, or they know when you're joyful, happy, and always easy. The spirit man is the same thing that will emanate to your physical body, okay? So God wants us to be changed totally, okay? From glory to glory. God like this to a high level will come to pass in this life now to those who work their faith and are led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So let us take our own our position together with God, the Godhead bodily as one. Amen. We have to think like how the God hit bodily thing. Okay? We have to do like how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit do. We gotta really exercise that like this in image, okay? You agree? Let's turn to coming to a close, John 17. I need to get this message out because this message is by God, revelation by God given to me this past week, but it's been building up from all past passages, okay? Yeah. Uh, let's look at 17, John 17, 21. That they all may be one, as thou Father art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. What is the glory talking about? Hmm? The Holy Spirit, the greater one in you. That's the glory that he's giving, that the same spirit that Jesus was given. Huh? He had to be born from the seed of David, okay? Concerning the flesh. But even with the flesh, he had to be taught the word. He had to grow in stature. He had to, he had to learn the word, you see? But he didn't go out and do the job, the good work, until he was baptized by the Holy Ghost. When he was baptized by the Holy Ghost, then, see, his spirit was sinless at the, all the time, you see? This is nothing could come on him, huh? But when the Holy Ghost came upon him, he got extraordinary great power because it is the plan of God. And God did that to us. He didn't hold it back. He gave us the same thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the glory. I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. What is he saying? God is no respecter of person. He loved Jesus. He loved you just as much as he loved Jesus. Why? Because you're his children. Is that simple enough? But now he wants us to act as his children, to operate as his children, to function as his children in this life now to the highest degree that you'll be able to perform. Everybody might be different, but the only thing going to get you there to a high level is that your desire and hunger and thirst after him, his kingdom and his righteousness. Can, can we have the revelation of God's resurrection of love? Also for you as one with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost to destroy Satan's work against the body of Christ or humanity of all the world salvation. That's the truth of the power God gave the body of Christ. 
with the mind of Christ on earth, with the mind that is so full of the love of God. Final scripture. Philippians. Philippians. The word of God is saying right here. Let this by be you, which was in Christ Jesus. So what does he say? God is no respecter of person. God is not limiting you. Let this by be you, which is also in Christ Jesus. He does not say, let this, let this by of Christ be known unto you. Let this by be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. What is that? What is the mind? Be in you. The glory of God, the Holy Ghost. As you get His provision and His resources of His Word, you're going to be more into His likeness. We bring forth the glorious image of God in you. Who be in the form of God, Thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. If you will celebrate that, the death of the cross, wherefore God also had highly exalted him. Have God also had highly exalted you, seated you in the right hand of the throne of grace? Because you are the body of Christ, you are the church on this earth, in the spiritual realm. And giving him a name which is above every name. Aren't you giving the name of Jesus? Yeah. That is above every name. As soon as a person gets born again, he has the most powerful weapon in his resources before he can get more into the likeness of God, before he can read the scripture, before he can become so strong of the power and authority that is in him, that he has the name of Jesus, yes. which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's your inheritance as joint heirs, you see, glory. of God's most powerful character of love. That everything in this earth, under this earth, and in the heavenly host of demonic activities, they must all bow. This is talking about the heavenly places where spiritual wickedness in high places. You see, that's the highest power of Satan. You see? They all must bow if you speak with power and authority. We represent Jesus on earth. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. It's important to know that this church has to grab hold of the scriptures in our bulletin. That you have to get it in you. That all messages from now to the return of Jesus Christ will be inputted because God is all wisdom. The treasure of God is wisdom and knowledge in Him is unsearchable. And when you do that, you get the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you. You can get every single message to that scripture that we've been giving you. They become revelation in you. It become faith in you. It's the very essence of truth. Hallelujah. But the church has to grab hold of it yet. Not to the degree 
that God desires until you know it in your heart, until you say it every single day, until it becomes revelation in you. It doesn't take long. It takes me only under 10 minutes to speak it all and more. You see? But yet, that's where all the treasures of God is. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you that before we begin, we're going to pray. Okay? You're going to come in agreement with me? We're going to pray for the United States of America. Okay? Praise the Lord. Are you ready? You believe? Amen. Are you excited? Amen. Are you on fire? fire? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And now, we use the delegated authority and power given unto the church, the body right here. Now, in Jesus' name, we lift up the United States of America, the nation of Israel, the body of Christ, our fifth state, our big island of Hawaii, and the rest of the world. We come against this virus in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you to die and not come back. Not as a seasonal thing, but be completely destroyed. Because you will not hinder the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, but put in fear on the people of this world so that they can have faith as a message of faith comes through as never before. Now devil you grab your lies and we shove it down your throat and we command you that you are the one that come to steal, kill and destroy. But we took authority and now we lose what Jesus said that he come to give life and life more abundantly. So we speak life and life more abundantly upon the world system that the gospel will be open to receive one of the greatest revival before the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we speak right now for over this church and this congregation to rise up and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might that we can do all things through Christ, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, which strengthens us. We lose that upon this church, and we lose the love of God to increase and abound more and more. For the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and to all others. And now, Father, I lose the importance of the character or the likeness of you upon this church. Lord, that they will start to say, that they will start to do what Jude 20 and 21 says, that they build themselves up in the most holy faith. That's the character of you, the essence of your likeness of love, Father. That as we build ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost daily, such, and Father, that praying will keep us in the love of you as we get stronger and stronger of that being increased in this church to finish the work. We speak blessing and prosperity upon this church Father, in every area of their life, we speak their mortal bodies to fashion itself 
And guess what Jesus did as he walked this earth? No sickness, no disease can come upon him. And we're going to get there as people start to fall into place and know who they are. From glory to glory, we've been changed into the same image. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God.